10 most bizarre slimy creatures Number 10, Selps. When beached, this invertebrate looks like something that was produced by a particularly nasty cold. They are also often confused with jellyfish despite having almost nothing in common with them other than appearance. When Selps are underwater, they're quite beautiful. Their translucent form looks like they dance in the water, but much like any jelly-based water creature, as soon as they end up on land, they go from supermodel to the blob. An interesting fact about these creatures as well is that they use jet propulsion to get around, and their method of movement is considered to be one of the most efficient in the animal kingdom. They are also used as an example of how vertebrates evolved because they have little groups of nerves that some scientists believe is an indicator of how our more complex central nervous system came to be. Number 9. Jellyfish Speaking of jellyfish, these sad dead fishes that will sometimes wash up on the shore of a beach taking on a gross, squishy texture that is sure to disgust someone just as much as it makes them sad. There are a ton of different types of jellyfish and each one will look slightly different when it washes on shore. Fun fact about jellyfish is that their subfilm name is Meduso, is Medusosa, which is named after the mythological monster from ancient Greece, Medusa. This is because their stingers that resemble Medusa's snake hair. Their sting also sometimes immobilizes threats much like the mythological creature. Persis defeated Medusa by using his shield to watch for her and then cutting off her head. If only you could do that with those little nuisances. Number 8. Blobfish You can't talk about slimy creatures without mentioning the blobfish. It's everybody's favorite ugly fish. The unfortunate animal was voted the world's ugliest animal by the Ugly Animal Preservation Society and was adopted as their mascot. The fish is a deep sea fish that only becomes blobby when it is brought to the surface because of its much lower pressure. It may be able to keep its shaping underwater, but it is still mainly gelatinous. The slimy texture of the animal helps it to stay buoyant at extreme depths when the pressure is much higher than we are used to. We we definitely wouldn't be able to live that deep and still keep our bones after all. The blobfish is common on the coasts of Australia, Tasmania and New Zealand. The blobfish is actually on its way to becoming endangered thanks to deep ocean trawling. Save the blobfish guys! Number 7. Monkfish Lophius or monkfish is another deep sea creature that probably never should have been brought to the surface. This pile of snot looks significantly more angry than any of the other animals on this list. Most likely because this is one of the only animals on the list that could bite your hand off if it wanted to. The monkfish can differ in color because it tends to hide in seaweed a lot. The fish even adopted to have appendages that resemble plants to hang out inconspicuously. One of the extra attachments can be moved 360 degrees and it helps the monkfish swim swallowing their prey whole. It's a good day not to be a fish. You can find these fish off the coast of most of Europe. Number 6. Naked Mole Rat Maybe you should hold off on that Kim Possible rewatch for a while just so that you can get this image out of your mind. These creatures could be compared to snot or some other human appendage that we are better off not taking out. The Naked Mole Rat is a native to East Africa and it's also known as a sand puppy or the desert mole rat. Despite being very displeasing to the eye, this animal is pretty unique and exciting. The mole rat lacks pain sensitivity in their skin and they have a very little metabolic and respiratory rates which are great adaptations for their life underground. I'm sure that a ton of people would love to live without pain, but this ability is used in response to the high levels of carbon dioxide in their habitat because of the poor ventilation. With an increase in carbon dioxide, their body would build up a large amount of acid in their tissue and because of their pain and sensitivity, they don't feel the effects of the acid. Number 5. Pecnitella magnifica Is this grossing you out? You're not the only one. These blobby snot-like masses have been popping up more and more all over the US in places that it isn't supposed to. There has been a steady increase of these blobs in the Pacific Northwest. It's a colony of organisms that group together to create a gelatinous substance that can be found either free-floating or stuck to something. It looks like an alien brain though. Not as impressive as alien like Xenomorph though, but more like the delicate aliens from War of the worlds that died from a cold. It might also be a good way to start the grossest water balloon fight in the world too. Just don't expect to keep your friends after it. Number 4. Hagfish The actual fish itself may just look like a messed up eel, but the real snot comes in when you touch it. Don't interact with this animal unless you have a strong stomach. The hagfish secretes a highly sticky slime substance that is sure to turn anyone's stomach. The fish has hundreds of glands that secrete this mucus when captured and held in and can produce up to 20 liters or 5 and 1 quarter gallons of slime. The mucus not only helps the hagfish get out of any unwary predator's jaws, but it also clogs 
bumps up the predator's gills, which can pretty effectively suffocate them. A fun fact about these animals is that they are the only known living organisms that has a skull but no vertebrate column. They also haven't evolved in 300 million years because the fossils of hagfish found from that period are almost identical to hagfish today. Why mess with a good system, right? Number 3. Bone-Eating Snot Flower Osidax mucoflorus is a subspecies of Osidax. The worm was given its name, Bone-Eating Snot Worm, because it does look a lot like snot. Also, it does eat bones. Not a creative day for scientists when this was discovered. The bones that this worm is eating are mostly whale bones, but they will eat virtually any bone that is given to them. They consume them through a bacteria that hangs out in their little mucus cloud that will burrow into the bone and devour it from the inside so that the worm can absorb the nutrients. The species that you see are all female, the male of these species are microscopic and they latch onto a female at birth and stay with her forever. These weird looking things fill an important role of the ecosystem because they decompose and recycle dead matter. It's grosser because thousands of these worms will cover a whale carcass, meshing all together until it just looks like somebody's trimmed the whale carcass in a carpet. Number 2. Cthulhu Larva Abyssal Sea Cucumber, Sea Pig or Cthulhu Larva, whatever you want to call it, it's still gross. They live 1000 meters down in the ocean and they are pretty standard down there. They reproduce a lot and each deep sea thrall for them can yield up to 300 to 600 specimens. They can be found in almost all of the areas around the world, but they are less common in more extreme water conditions like water that is too warm or too cold. The Cthulhu Larvae name were apparently earned because of its weird and upsetting appearance. The tentacles look like they could expand at any time and take you away. The so-called tentacles are just appendages that are supposed to make it easier for this slug-like animal to eat. So maybe this creature isn't all that unusual. The joke will be on us someday when they reveal that they were just mini Cthulhu and we're all screwed because we made fun of their appearance. Number 1. Rock Snot Might want to stay near a toilet for this entry. Didymosphenia geminata, or Rock Snot, is a type of algae that has become a sort of nuisance in some freshwater sources. It is an invasive species that is native to the Northern Hemisphere, but no one told the Rock Snot that. They've been spreading more and more in Australia, Argentina, New Zealand and Chile. Even in its natural water, it is now being considered an invasive species because of its rapid spread. It's been doing this since 1980s and although the spread doesn't pose a risk to humans, the ecosystem that it takes root in can suffer from its entrance. The ideal environment for this algae is cold water with low nutrient levels, and the species can be spread from source to source by just a single drop of water. New Zealand has even released guidelines to stop the spread. You should check for the algae, clean all your items for at least a minute under hot water with bleach, and then make sure you dry them. Only you can prevent the spread of rock slime. That's what Smokey the Bear said, right? 